So please welcome Ms. Aish. Hey, thanks. Okay, hello everyone, how are you doing? Uh, so the title of my presentation is called Puppeteer, Testing and Automating All the Things. But since we have only 15 minutes, we'll have to focus on some of the things. Uh, so if you all find Puppeteer interesting, then feel free to talk to me after the presentation. Uh, I can tell you about a few more ideas how to use it. So my name is Machi, and I'm a front-end developer on Bitbucket server. And two years ago, I did move from Poland to Sydney. And like, I, I can tell you that I love the city so far, but you know, like, I'm still not convinced with Vegemite. So if you know what Vegemite is, probably you know what I mean. Uh, so lately, lately, I've been very excited about the Puppeteer and what you can build on top of it. And today, I will tell you what kind of scripts and tooling you can build with the Puppeteer library and how this can help automating your daily workflow. So my talk is not about testing, and don't get me wrong, testing is important and we all should do it, but it's not the main part of this talk. So I have a few examples that might help you writing functional or end-to-end -end tests, but we'll focus more on the automation of a web-based application. And as a web-based application, I mean everything that you can run in the browser. It can be a full product, like for example, Bitbucket, or a plugin for it, if you are a plugin developer, or basically any other cool project that you are currently working on. So before we start talking about what Puppeteer is, uh, let's first focus on the concept of the headless Chrome and how does the Chrome DevTool protocol works. So if you ever work with JavaScript, you might be familiar with this funny ghost. Uh, so this is the PhantomJS logo, so the project that was kind of popular a few years ago. And like PhantomJS was used to run uh, JavaScript unit tests. Uh, so it was, it was running them on the real WebKit engine. And some people also tend to use it to generate a PDF files for some reason. Uh, so it was the first headless browser in the history. And it allowed you to run HTML and JavaScript code directly from the CLI. Uh, in the middle of 2017, uh, Google released Chrome version 59 that introduced a headless mode. And the headless mode is kind of similar concept to the PhantomJS, so you can start a browser from the termi terminal without the UI and pass additional parameters into it. So you can use headless mode to take a screenshot for, for, of a page. So this is kind of like the basic example. And again, uh, you can even print, print a page to the PDF file, which people like to do for some reason, like it shouldn't, you shouldn't generate PDF on the browser, but yeah, we are doing this all the time. And a lot of this can be done with a headless Chrome and terminal. Uh, so additionally, Chrome released a support for CDP, which stands for Chrome DevTools Protocol, that allows you to connect directly to the uh, browser process by using WebSocket API. Uh, so let's take a look how it works. Uh, so I'm gonna open a terminal and start a Chrome browser with enable to remove debugging by providing a port number. And this will open a new browser window where we can navigate to the atlasian.com website. And additionally, what you can see, I'm running an uh, Opera browser, and I'm using the remote DevTools page to debug it. And we'll use the same port number uh, we just provided. Uh, so right now we can write a simple JavaScript code and check if the CDP works. So this is kind of like really, uh, sorry. So next we'll open real DevTools for our DevTool, DevTools, and please bear with me since this might be confusing. Uh, we'll open a network tab and check how the website WebSocket connection is being used to transport our hello message with CDP. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna execute this uh, testing command for the second time. And this time we can see that we have outgoing WebSocket message from the Opera to the Chrome browser. And as you can see, the message contains our JavaScript code. Uh, so this is not simple, right? This is like kind of complex. So we have like two browsers, we have like WebSocket connection under the hood, like one browser is talking with another browser with, with it, and it's kind of complex. But this is how the uh, remote debugging works. It's using WebSocket to send different type of messages and operations to the browser and tell it what to do. Uh, so we could check the documentation of the CDP protocol and use it to send actually the different type of operation into the Chrome browser. And 
we could, for example, modify the DOM HTML, what we just done, like a pretty nice example, but still you can do this. You could inject in the JavaScript code on the page and click on any element from, from your page and basically do all the operations you can do with the regular web browser. So I believe you might feel like you are watching the Inception movie right now because of all the browser and DevTools I have just shown you. So you know, like DevTools inside the DevTools, right? Uh, so thankfully, you don't need to inspect the low-level CDP protocol manually or read the documentation for it. So that's why we have Puppeteer for. Uh, so Puppeteer was created uh, so you don't need to write direct calls into the CDP, but you can focus on the high-level API. Uh, so the Puppeteer is a node-based abstraction over a CDP. Uh, you can use NPM or Yarn to install it locally, and the package automatically downloads the compatible Chrome version for you and you don't need to worry about doing this manually. Uh, so the library code is based on the asynchronous flow and it's, it's using async await syntax. And if you don't know what this, the async await, it's kind of like abstraction over the JavaScript promises. So let's take a look at the example of Puppeteer. Uh, so what you can see on the screen is an example code that recreates what we just did manually, like with in the previous video. Uh, so you, you don't need to take screenshots of the code since I'm gonna share uh, like the links after the presentation, so then you, you can just download it. So we can focus just on, on the example. So first what we need to do is to load the NPM Puppeteer package into our script. And since our code is asynchronous, we need to wrap it with this async function. And this, uh, this syntax is something that you can start using from Node version 7.6 and above. So it's kind of like a modern version of Node, but yeah, it's probably, you, you can already use, it, use this. Uh, so next we'll run the browser, and as you can see, we don't need to provide the port number this time. So Puppeteer is actually handling this for you. And we can open a new tab and navigate to the Atlassian.com page. So right now we can execute our test script in the browser context. Uh, so the evaluate function is not executing the code inside the node process, but forwarding it to the browser. And again, this is kind of like really naive example, but I think like you know what, where we are getting with this. And so last but not least, we need to tell Puppeteer and our script that actually we finished working with it and we want to uh, close the browser and disconnect from the CDP session. So. If we would run this code uh, using our script that we just wrote, so, well, you would see nothing really, right? So the reason is we are running the Chrome with the headless mode, so th there is nothing there. And to check if our script works fine, uh, we can pass the additional option called headless, and this will basically launch the uh, Puppeteer with the browser. So it's like you are running the Puppeteer headful, if we, we can say that. Uh, so thanks to that, we can run Chrome with the UI, and you can check this technique to observe like how your script is being executed, or even like you can debug it. So right now we know how the Puppeteer works and how to run it. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about next is a few automation ideas that you can use. Uh, so th there are many different ideas like how you can automate the browser and your web-based application with Puppeteer. And since I'm a front-end developer, we will focus on how you can use Puppeteer to automate your dev workflow. So the first idea is quite simple. It's about taking screenshots. And we, with Puppeteer, we are able to take screenshots of the full page with just a few lines of the code. And you might start asking, okay, like, so why do you want to take screenshots? So it's kind of like just the entry point where you would like, for example, to create something that is called like a visual regression testing or you would just would like to preserve some kind of like UI patterns and to ensure that nothing is broken. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to open the browser and navigate to the page like we did in the previous example. And once we've done that, uh, we can call the screenshot function on the uh, page object and we can tell it where we would like to save our image file. So as you can see, we'll pass additional parameter uh, called full page. Uh, since we are interested in taking a screenshot of the full page. So the script will take a screenshot for us and save the results to the atlasian.png file. And 
you don't need to take a screenshot of the full page if you don't want. If you are interested in like just single element on the page, you can also do this with Puppeteer. So let's take a look at this second example. Uh, so what we are doing here differently is we are passing the CSS selector using the dollar function. And the dollar function is kind of similar to the jQuery API and works basically the same. So you can pass CSS selector that will find something on your page and return the DOM element for you. Uh, so this time we'll run our second example uh, that is taking screenshot of the banner element from the atlasian.com page and save it to the file. So as you can see, it takes just like really a few seconds to do this. So we have our file ready on our disk. So I have like another pro tip for you. Uh, so what you can do with Puppeteer, you can actually overwrite some kind of settings, like for example, setting a custom uh, viewport or setting a custom uh, user, browser user, user agent. And this will allow you to actually emulate the mobile devices and also take a screenshot from different screen size. So for example, you can check like how this page being rendered on mobile device, iPhone, iPad, and things like that. Uh, the next example is about uh, one of my favorite features in Puppeteer. Uh, so kind of like a year ago, Chrome introduced another interesting addition to the DevTools uh, that is called uh, code coverage. So if you open a DevTools in the regular browser and like find the code coverage panel and enable it, then you can start getting the real-time results of your JavaScript and CSS code. So basically you can get the information how much of the code is being loaded on the page and at the same time how much of this code is being executed. Uh, so preferably the coverage results should be like really high, so you should like always remember about optimizing your bundle and with Chrome, you can easily check that. Uh, but we can also check that with Puppeteer. So let's take a look at this example where we're gonna actually do this with the help of Puppeteer. Uh, so this time before we navigate to the page, we need to tell Puppeteer they would like to enable the coverage. And next we can navigate to our page. So in our example, it's again atlasian.com. And, so, and then Puppeteer will start collecting the coverage for us. So once the page is loaded, uh, we can get the results, and then we can just stop collecting the coverage. And this is our second part of the same uh, script. So basically right now we need to use a little bit of math to calculate the uh, total value of the coverage. So we need to transform the results and calculate the total value of those used bytes. And finally, uh, we can display the results uh, in our terminal. So if we run this code with Puppeteer for the Atlassian.com page, uh, we'll get a summary of the coverage re results. Uh, so as you can see, the number is not that high, unfortunately, and there is a space for us to improve our page, but at least we can measure that now automatically. Uh, so additionally, we can use a small NPM package called page coverage that will use Puppeteer API to visualize the results for us. Uh, so we can see the summary of each of the assets we have just loaded on the page. And with Puppeteer, we can not only measure the code coverage, but we can write kind of like a custom helper that will enforce keeping the high value of the coverage. So you could, for example, write a merge check for your continuous integration and guard, guard your application from getting bloated. So we already talked about keeping our bundles small, and I would like to continue uh, talking about the performance. So we can use uh, Puppeteer to collect other performance metrics, and the first contentful paint and first meaningful paint are the two measurements that describes how fast your application plugin or your project is actually loading inside the browser. Uh, so the first contentful paint is a measurement between, when, between a time when user navigates to the page and when the page is being loaded. Uh, so when, when the browser is actually rendering the content. So this time, the lower number, uh, the better. So with the help of Puppeteer, we can measure that metric and ensure our applications stay performant. Uh, so you don't need to manually open the dev tools to check that. Uh, so you can automate the whole process of getting the results and leverage Puppeteer. And this could, this could be used as, a, for example, monitoring system for your application. Uh, 
you could get like an alert when you uh, when the value is like getting too big after you deploy a new version of the application. So it's kind of like you are just creating a health check. So I told you that with Puppeteer you don't need to uh, use the low level CDP protocol, uh, but if you really want, you actually still can do this. And this has some pros if you would like to start using it. Uh, so thanks to the CBD CDP, we can simulate a network throttling and check how our application uh, will work when we, actually, when we slow down the network conditions. Uh, so we can set a custom uh, upload and download speed, uh, or we can even check if our progressive web apps works when we are entering the offline mode. So this is something that you can use with uh, like the direct calls to the CDP. So there are like way more examples that you can try. Uh, the documentation of the Puppeteer project is very extensive and contains like really good description of all the, all the methods available for headless Chrome. And at the end of my slides, uh, I'm gonna show with you a few links so you can, you can take the photos at the end of the presentation. Okay, so this, this is cool and probably like during the talk you start like thinking yeah, this is really interesting. Uh, I would like to, to, to start using Puppeteer, but I don't want to invest time, I don't want to invest effort in a single browser only. Uh, I need to support Firefox, I need to support Internet Explorer, I need to support Edge, like Safari, and like all the mobile browsers, right? So right now I just talk about Chrome. Uh, so I had a good news for you. So there's an ongoing initiative to add the missing compatibilities to the Firefox, and as for, as for today, I check it in the morning. Uh, the support covers more than 90% of the Puppeteer API, and the project is like getting like really close to ship all the missing uh, APIs. So if you are interested in that, you can like always go to this page that you find in the bottom link. Uh, so the, the page is called as Puppeteer Firefox Ready. And as for, as for the Microsoft, uh, at the end of 2018, they announced a plan to rewrite their main browser, Edge, so I'm not gonna talk about Internet Explorer, that is actually like a legacy. And the plan is to create a new version of Edge that's gonna use a Chrome open source project. So basically this is kind of like the same engine that Chrome and Safari are using. And I checked today, like a few hours ago, actually Microsoft announced that there's like a pub public uh, preview build of the Edge, so like this is like kind of like really interesting. And I don't know yet if uh, Puppeteer can run on it, but I'm keen to test it like once I'm actually get back to computer. Uh, so in my opinion, Puppeteer should work for Edge out of the box, and I hope it will. Uh, so for the Safari, I don't have any news. I was actually trying to get some answers. And again, like I hope that Puppeteer team, once they're gonna finish working on the Firefox, uh, they're gonna add the missing uh, compatibility for the, Fire, uh, for the Safari browser as well. Uh, so today we have learned how the headless Chrome and Chrome DevTool protocol works. Uh, I did present you three different ideas, uh, how you can use Puppeteer to control the browser and automate uh, some of your daily workflow. And if you're not convinced yet to spend time automating all the things with Puppeteer, I hope that you are at least tempted to try and automate some of the things. Thank you. All right. So yeah, this is a slide for you that you can take screenshots and get the Prezzo and some additional links. I challenge anyone that is behind me if your camera can actually still read that, that five-point font. You're an engineer. Um, anyone have any questions for Mache? Like, I, do you see all the cameras? It's like you're like Lady Gaga. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Any questions? Well, we have uh, Mache on stage. Yeah, if you have some questions, we can talk uh, after the last presentation. I'm gonna be here around for the till the end of the day. So, I have one more question for you. Do uh, we, sir? So yeah. we use this ourselves internally. Uh, so we started using it uh, for <laughs> helping us like doing some of the things. So for example, running the visual regression testing. Uh, do we use it in some other products? I'm not sure, it's kind of still, I would say, like a new thing, okay. but I hope that we will someday like use it more widely in the, in the Atlassian. Okay, got it. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank Nate. you. <laughs>